Good morning. I'm going to wait a few minutes but uh, before we begin the service, but I just thought we'd start in and um, please, I have a candle, so you may get a candle to be the light of Christ and uh, we'll start formally and I'll be welcome you all formally in a few minutes. Welcome. My name is the Reverend Nancy Hennessy, and um, I am here today with uh, hopefully some of you who are here to really pray for our country and to pray for each and every one of us as we enter into this time of our election um, on this election day, November 3rd of 2020. And I certainly hope that uh, you will join me in prayer and for our nation, for peace and for calm, for whatever the outcome may be. We all want the best for our nation and for, this, for everyone. As I said a little earlier, I have a candle which I have lit um, and I encourage you to do the same, to be the light of Christ out in the world. We are a praying people. And this is very appropriate that we are here today to enjoy morning prayer. Uh, you're actually in my home. This is my dining room. Uh, during this COVID period, I have been working uh, from home. And so I welcome you. It's quite windy outside. And uh, you can sometimes see that through the reflection of the window. But I'm so glad that you're here with me today. And we also have, you may use the Book of Common Prayer, um, which has the entire service in it. Morning prayer is something that is done every morning in many, many churches throughout the world, the Anglican Communion. As a seminarian, I um, actually had morning prayer with my entire community every single day. And so it is a wonderful way to, be to begin the day. But we also have a bulletin, which is um, online that you can uh, download or print out, and I encourage you to do so. But if that is too much, just sit. Just sit and rest and let these words of scripture, words of prayer, be balm for your soul. Do what you need to do in order to uh, be calm and be at peace as we begin this very sort of exciting and very sometimes nervous and nerve-wracking day. And as we always do at Sherwood, we begin our service with a little bit of silence so that we can open our hearts and our minds to hearing the words of the scriptures and the prayers that we will all lift up today. So please, a few moments of silence and then we will begin our morning prayer service. Thank you. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Send out your light and your truth, that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor, saying together the confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed by what you we have done and by what we have left undone we have not loved you with our whole heart we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves we are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son jesus christ have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name amen Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 
Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim our, your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And now let us say together the Veniti, Psalm 95, 1 through 7. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, to, that today you would hearken to his voice. And now we will recite together Psalm 61 and Psalm 62, the Psalms that are appointed for today. Hear my cry, O God, and listen to my prayer. I call upon you from the ends of the earth with heaviness in my heart. Set me upon the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. I will dwell in your house forever. I will take refuge under the cover of your wings. For you, O oh God, have heard my vows. You have granted me the heritage of those who fear your name. Add length of days to the king's life. Let his years extend over many generations. Let him sit enthroned before God forever. Bid love and faithfulness watch over him. So I will always sing the praise of your name and day by day I will fulfill my vows. Psalm 62. For God alone my soul in silence waits. For him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will you assail me to crush me all of you together, as if you were a leaning fence, a toppling wall. They seek only to bring me down from my place of honor. Lies are their chief delight. They bless with their lips, but in their hearts they curse. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, hold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in extortation or robbery. Take no empty pride. Through wealth increased, let not, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice I have heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now for the first lesson, a reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. 
The pride of the higher realms is the clear vault of the sky, as glorious to behold as the sight of heavens. The sun, when it appears, proclaims as it rises what a marvelous instrument it is, the work of the Most High. At noon it parches the land, and who can withstand its burning heat? A man tending a furnace works in burning heat, but three times as hot as the sun scorching the mountains. Its breath out fire, breathes out fiery vapors, and its bright rays blind the eyes. Great is the Lord who made it. At his orders, it hurries on its course. It is the moon that marks the changing seasons, governing the times, their everlasting sign. From the moon comes the sign for festal days, a light that wanes when it completes its course. The new moon, as it names, suggests, renews itself. How marvelous it is in this change a beacon to the hosts on high, shining in the vault of the heavens. The glory of stars is the beauty of the heaven, a glittering array in the heights of the Lord. On the orders of the Holy One, they stand in their appointed places. They never relax in their watches. Look at the rainbow and praise him who made it. It is exceedingly beautiful in its brightness. It encircles the sky with its glorious arc. The hands of the Most High have stretched it out. By his command, he sends the driving snow and speeds the lightnings of his judgment. Therefore, the storehouses are opened and the clouds fly out like birds. In his majesty, he gives the clouds their strength, and the hailstones are broken in pieces. The voice of his thunder rebukes the earth. When he appears, the mountains shake. At his will, the south wind blows. So do the storm from the north and the whirlwind. He scatters the snow like birds flying down, and its descent is like locusts alighting. The eye is dazzled by the beauty of its whiteness, and the mind is amazed as it falls. He pours frost over the earth like salt, and icicles form like pointed thorns. The cold north wind blows, and ice freezes on the water. It settles on every pool of water, and the water puts it on like a breastplate. He consumes the mountain and burns up the wilderness and withers the tender grass like fire. A mist quiet, quickly heals all things. The falling dew, dew gives refreshment from the heat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let us say together Canticle 13. Glory to you, Lord God of all fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you in the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We praise you, we highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We praise you and highly exalt you forever. And now for the second reading, a reading from the Gospel of Luke. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, <clears throat> but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. 
or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them? Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable, a man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? And he replied, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well, good. But if not, you can cut it down. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let us say a canticle 15 together, the song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty in their, from their thrones, and he has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to help, to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now let us say together and standing, if you are able, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers in righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth and your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship 
in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints and all virtuous and godly living that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, with who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A Collect for Peace. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we surely, trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Almighty God, to whom we must account for all our powers and privileges, guide the people of the United States in the election of officials and representatives that by faithful administration and wise laws, the right of all may be protected and our nation be enabled to fulfill your purposes. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. And almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of thy faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before thee for all members of thy holy church that in their vocation and ministry we may they may truly and godly serve thee through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us take a few moments to either silently or aloud offer prayers and thanksgivings and petitions to our Lord. And now let us pray together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining me in my home today for morning prayer. Go in peace and know that you are loved and beloved by God. And share that love as a light of Christ out in the world. Thank you.